So it's that time of the month again for another Q&A. Ask Brandon. I got a pretty good selection of questions, and uh, based on the thumbnail and title, you already know some of them are a little spicy, but uh, you know what? Let's not even beat around the bush. Let's kick off into the biggest question, which is based on the thumbnail and everything, which is uh, Mishuku Tensei controversy. So this one comes from Joe. What do you think of some of the controversy surrounding Mashuku Tensei's Rudy? For context, lots of people criticizing him for his character writing, claiming that the story doesn't portray his pedophilia as flawed. This is what I like to call the uh, Twitter outrage crowd. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things in this world you should be outraged by, but uh, an anime... It's not one of them. I mean, let's just boil it down simply that this is a show that is literally portraying all the negative things about Rudy's character in a negative spotlight, and when he does positive things, it is portrayed in a positive light. It's a story about change. And one of the biggest issues I have with the internet in today's age is that people want everything to relate to their own moral compass their own moral code. So if a character does things that are bad from their point of view, we say no, no, no. Unless they're presented as the antagonist of the story, we can't watch that. There is tons of stuff that Rudy does, says, or thinks, and I'm like, that's absolutely disgusting. But it is a story, and we're watching a story to make our minds see things from different perspectives, even if we don't necessarily agree with them. And then you have characters and people like Mark who will come in and, you know, they haven't had their outrage fill yet. And it was great because when I got asked this question, Mark pretty much came in like a day or two later, almost feeling like his spidey sense was tingling. There's a sense of outrage that I need to just get out there. And they're just talking completely out their ass. And you have to wonder how many times they were dropped on their head. Because every negative thing that Rudy has done in this show has literally been presented in a horrible spotlight. And then when he does positive things, they get presented in a positive light. And I would think that after Game of Thrones becoming mainstream, we wouldn't have to deal with bullshit like this. Because there is literally younger characters with live actors who are involved in murderous and sexual things far worse than anything that Mushoku Tensei showed us in its first season. And just to give context as an example, I'm not sure if I can say this word on YouTube with how I rate my monetization, but there's a hard R scene in Game of Thrones involving Ramsay Bolton, and it's one of the more controversial scenes in later Game of Thrones because she's forced against her will to involve into some pretty horrible and disturbing scenes. In the book, however, there is a much younger kid character who is involved in that scene. George R. R. Martin has tons of far worse things both adapted on TV and in his book than what Mushoku Tensei ever did, and I don't recall the same level of outrage, or at least the longevity of that type of outrage. You would think after something like Game of Thrones becoming mainstream, showing us horrible characters on screen and in the books, that we wouldn't have to deal with bullshit and clowns like Mark too often, but unfortunately we do. So my thoughts on it, it's absolutely bullshit, it's stupid, and it doesn't portray the negative things in a positive spotlight. Get your heads out of the ground and go touch some grass. Please and thank you. What anime of 2021 do you think will be regarded as a classic in say maybe 10 or 15 years besides Attack on Titan? Now this is an interesting one because there's a lot of things that go into it. Attack on Titan is such a juggernaut and you know it's going to be a classic alongside stuff like Demon Slayer. And my gut or at least my hopeful side of me hopes that it's going to be Ranking of Kings which started in 2021 is carrying into 2022. From the aesthetic, the Ghibli-like feel, the way characters are portrayed. That to me is something that if you would dumb down the visuals in terms of its presentation, I could have easily been convinced it was an 80s anime, something that I just heard about rumblings from and I watched and I was like, holy shit, this is some of the best ever. I hope it's Ranking of Kings, but there's probably a lot of good arguments to be made about a lot more of the mainstream shows, which is perfectly fine. I mean, I mean, shows that get people into anime are always welcome in my books, but the hopeful side of me says Ranking of Kings. Do you like any boys love or girls love or even Yuri? Also, what are some old anime like older than 2019 or 2016 that you want to complete or watch still? Like for me, I want to watch and complete Bleach, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Magical Girl Sight, and To Love Rue the most at some point. I don't really go out of my way to consume the genre. I mean, there's certain manga series I forget. I think there was one called Girlfriends or something. And I mean, there's been so many like Yuri Kuma as an example. And I mean, there's, I guess you could say Banana Fish for the boys love side. There's, I mean, it's just a matter of if it's a good show or not. It's just, unfortunately, a lot of times when it comes to those genres, they just pander for, like, the fan service. But when it's a good show, like something like a banana fish that's telling a story, 
and incorporates it, whether it's male or female like, that's when I enjoy it or not. I just don't see the appeal of just simply going for the, the teasing sort of a thing, which many go for. So it's just a matter of if they do it good or not. And in terms of like a longer show they haven't completed, I mean, I definitely want to get around to completing the One Piece anime. I've read like the first, I don't know, maybe 800 chapters of One Piece, and I've seen maybe a few hundred episodes of the anime. And while I know a lot of people didn't like the filler and stuff in the One Piece anime, I did enjoy it with the dub. So I, you know, someday when I have more time, I plan to maybe do an episode or two a day over a few years and maybe consume the entire One Piece package, good and bad and like, because I just kind of want to see the whole thing animated. I know you talked about a few of them in the past, but do you have any plans to talk about not necessarily review, but talk about older anime, less known ones like from the 90s, early 2000s? as well as talking about manga novels that you've read or possibly want to read. I mean, anytime I complete a show that basically I'm catching up to, usually because there's like a new season coming out, like, you know, sometimes shows that 10 years ago got a season one are now getting a season two. I mean, I cover them now. I used to do a lot more highly edited, like big character analysis and sort of videos. But I mean, between copyright and just the time it takes to do them, they just lost their fun to me. I much prefer just getting up here and doing simpler videos and just talking and being a lot more human than trying to be some analytical machine. But I mean, anytime something catches my eye to the point that I'm passionate about talking about it, of course I'll do it. It's just, I mostly, in terms of my anime consumption, I watch seasonal anime because, I mean, in my free time, I like to play games and stuff like that. But I mean, if anything does catch my eye, I mean, you'll get a video if I'm passionate enough to talk about it and I think people are willing to listen to it as well. When I was first new to your channel, I honestly had a small issue finding series you react to. Wondering if you stopped watching the series to spend time with others, haha. <laughs> There's some I come to see you do two episodes in a row, so a new episode will come every other week. Maybe an odd question, but I wonder if you take notes while watching the episodes to then talk about in your video. Do you actually remember all these names? Because I literally have a hard time remembering names and feel bad when trying to have a conversation with other anime fans. Now, in terms of the two episode things, that's basically what I do. I mean, sometimes I get busy with appointments, they overlap and I don't have time. And really, if you're not talking about the same day the new episode airs, you don't get as many views. So it just it makes a lot more sense in terms of just doing a double review, which sometimes is just good for like giving yourself some mental sanity and some spacing between episodes. And in terms of like, do I take notes? No, I don't. When I was first starting out, I'd have like notes and because I just couldn't remember things because I didn't have, you know, experience doing YouTube. But I mean, that was only for like the first couple of months. I mean, for the past five years, this is all off the top of my head. That's why sometimes I avoid saying names because it is hard for me to remember names and I just have to go off the top of my head. But in terms of like remembering, like I watch the episode, I make my thumbnail and then I record and then I edit. So it's all fresh. I take a look at like sites like my anime list before I get up to record and just glimpse the names in case I haven't remembered them, especially at the start of a new season. Because I mean, how the hell do you expect me to remember 50 different names from all the different shows, right? But no, it's just all off the top of my head. I'm pretty good at just like talking on the fly, as you can probably tell right here, right? I don't plan what I say, I just say it. And you know, I cut out the dead air and I cut out, you know, if I fumbled a word or something, but no, it's just, it's just me. That's how I talk. If I'm passionate about something, I can talk for hours on end and say absolutely nothing, say something interesting. But yeah, it's just all off the top of my head and something I'm proud of because I know a lot of people can't do it and they need to script and things like that. Me, it's all off the top of my head, baby. Is there any older series that you wish could be readapted with a complete adaptation? You know, this is a hard one, right? Because when you look at certain shows like Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, I think the original Full Metal Alchemist is a good show. And I think even as it stands in the differences, it's a good show to consume. But of course, it's great to have that Brotherhood treatment as well. So you do have both the kind of like anime original ending plus the kind of complete adaptation version. But in terms of like my gut saying right now, I gotta be honest, this may be a boring answer, but not really. Like, there hasn't been any anime recently that have completely ruined it for me. I think you could definitely make the argument that Promise Neverland, it would be beneficial to have like a complete adaptation just so the fandom could enjoy it because I enjoyed season two. But I mean, I did end up reading the manga and I would say, yeah, it's slightly better, but it never lives up to season one. So I mean, you could make an argument, I guess there, Neverland could get the Brotherhood treatment, but it's not going to change all that much because I don't think the future arcs live up to the season one's content, but that's kind of my opinion anyway. I think that's all for the Q&A this this time around so uh we're cutting it pretty close i thought i was going to make the end of this month so end of next month we will have another q a leave your thoughts questions if you have any and i might even feature it in a future video and if i don't get enough questions in the comments here i'll make a post asking for more so anyway till next time everyone take care please don't get outraged for pointless reasons and have a good one